Uh, we need to get started. We're rolling through Genesis. Um, Genesis has 50 chapters, so we're going to finish it up this semester. And then next semester, I'm starting a, a book of Revelation. And uh, I'm, I'm nervous about it because it's just such a tough, tough book. But it should be good. And it honestly... To jump from Genesis to Revelation yeah. is kind of cool. So we get to see the beginning and the end. You can do it, John. All right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to take that challenge. And uh, it should be a lot of fun. When will the next one start, Joe? What will... Is it March? January, April? February, March is this one. So sometime, I think, April, April? May, June, maybe? Yeah, April. I think in April. Maybe. Um, I'll, I'll kind of keep everybody up once it gets a little closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Right now, I'm just kind of going week by week. Uh, but um, let's get started. There's, I'm, I love this final part of Genesis because it's such a just such beautiful pictures of who Jesus is, and uh, and that's why I'm looking forward to Revelation because Revelation is the revelation of Jesus Christ, and uh, so and the, Genesis reveals the beginning and His plan. <coughs> Revelation gives us the end. So we've been going through Genesis. Uh, Joseph is in charge of uh, Egypt now, and uh, uh, he's they've gone through the seven years of plenty. Now they're uh, starting into the famine in verse forty-two, and uh, uh, we're going to move right into that. So um, let's just jump right in. <clears throat> I love this verse. Why do you look at one another? Genesis 42, verse 1, when Jacob saw that there was grain in Egypt, famines going on, they've got nothing to eat, uh, Jacob said to his sons, why do you look at one another? Why do you, what do you look? They didn't know what to do. Their sons, there was no food, they couldn't figure out what to do, and Jacob's, that's like, you idiots, what kind of kids did I raise? Go get some food from Egypt, right? And he said, indeed, I have heard that there is grain in Egypt. Go down to that place and buy for us there that we may live and not die. So uh, Jacob's sons were not sure what to do about the famine. And Jacob chides them. Pay, think, think, think. Pay attention. Um, there's grain in Egypt just like there's life in Christ. Joseph is in uh -huh. Egypt. They need to go down where Joseph is. They don't know this yet, but that's where he is and the life is is where he is. Um, so, stop looking at each other and trust in him. They were looking at themselves rather than looking towards Joseph. Or Joseph is a very good picture of Jesus Christ. Um, so, ten brothers go to Egypt. Oh, keep in mind, when you see the number ten, it, it's representative of the law. There was ten brothers from Leah and the two handmaidens and then uh, Joseph and Benjamin uh, was from the uh, one that Jacob loved, mm -hmm. from Rachel. Rachel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Rachel. Mm -hmm. um, and Joseph is a picture of Christ, and Benjamin is usually a picture of the church. So, uh, uh, verse 3. So Joseph's ten brothers went down to buy grain in Egypt, but Jacob did not send Joseph's brother Benjamin with his brothers, for he said, lest some calamity befall him. And the sons of Israel went to buy grain among those who journeyed, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. So Joseph said, you're not taking Benjamin. I See, he, Jacob, Jacob, you're not taking Benjamin, Joseph's brother. Um, Jacob loved Joseph and Benjamin more than all those other kids. Um, he, he loved them. He did not want to lose Benjamin. It was the son of his old age, and uh, Joseph was his favorite, but he loved Benjamin too. More than all those other kids. You didn't see him saying that to uh, Benjamin. He was chiding the other ones. So, ten usually represents the law. He sent the ten brothers down there, okay? Um, and you'll notice that when they get there, they're going to bow down to Joseph. The law always... The law is the servant of grace. It's never the other way around. Uh, ten represents the law. Joseph represents Christ. Benjamin represents the church. Jacob always thought the worst. He worried about Benjamin. You remember Jacob was always worried 
something bad was going to happen. <clears throat> when he uh, <clears throat> was returning home, he was worried that Esau was going to kill him. Um, he was constantly worried about what people were going to do to him. When he left Laban, uh, he snuck out. He didn't tell Laban he was leaving. Laban didn't know it for three days and then pursued him. And again, Laban said, why didn't you tell me you were leaving? He goes, I was afraid that you might take my wives from me and kill me and all this stuff. Jacob operates out of fear most of the time. And here he does it again. I'm keeping Benjamin. Nothing's going to happen to him. Uh, but God has a plan. See how God, watch how God works through Jacob to accomplish his will. Um, the ten bow to the master. Verse 6. Now Joseph was governor over the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Remember the uh, dream that he had? How they bowed down? Uh, Joseph saw his brothers and recognized them. When they bowed down, he remembered. But he acted as a stranger to them and spoke roughly to them. And that's good for his disguise. And he said to them, Where do you come from? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. So Joseph, he, he's being mean to them. He's speaking harshly to them. Um, the ten brothers bow to the master. The law is the servant. Christ is the master. Every time. Um, we don't serve the law. We serve Christ. And in serving Christ, the law is fulfilled. He fulfilled the law. Mm -hmm. And therefore, mm -hmm. our allegiance is to Him. Mm -hmm. Because when you try to serve the law, uh, I, I really don't know how to express this other than to say, when you try to do it under your own power, you fail every time. Mm -hmm. But if you just focus on Christ, do the best that you can, you are not governed by that law. The mm -hmm. law is the servant. Christ is the master. Uh, Joseph spoke harshly to disguise himself. Verse 8. So Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. Then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them and said to them, okay, so he remembers the dreams, and he remembers how they made fun of him, all the things they did to him, and so now he, he, he's, he's getting back a little bit. I don't know that they, ten of them did not recognize their own brother. Well, the Egyptians wore eyeliner, okay. and um, they, they yeah. uh, uh, were clean shaven, and uh, he was 18 when they did that, so he probably had some facial hair, maybe. Um, but definitely eyeliner and then the, the headdresses that they wore and stuff. But how, and how many? Oh. Oh. How many years was that? Hey! Hello! She's oh, big. the dogs. Okay. Um, how, many, uh, oh. how many years between uh, when they last saw mm -hmm. them? How long ago was it? Because it was. But. Uh, let's see. Let me think. That's a good question. I'm trying to think. He was in jail for. He was in jail for ten years, right. fourteen years total, uh, and then he was with Potiphar for a while. So it's probably been twenty years. Yeah, at least because seven years for the good years, right? So ten oh, years, yeah, maybe thirty. Yeah, because when he came out of jail, it was seven years of. Uh, famine? That's right. No, yeah. first yeah. there was no famine. First. He was in jail was seven for years, four first. years. Seven years of planning. Yeah. But it never tells you when he, like, hmm. no, really but when came. He, yeah. But when so, he, so it was a long. There's a long time, time long between, time. Yeah. between yeah. the last yeah. set of songs. Well, so. and uh, I remember in college there's this girl, very pretty girl, and she wore a lot of makeup, but she was very pretty, right? And uh, kind of a short girl. I'm trying to remember her name, but I can't remember. But she had a boy, and his name was Nicholas, and he was about five. And Nicholas would run all over campus. This was at CBC, and uh, uh, we used to play ball with him out in the uh, out in the lawn and stuff like that. And, and uh, she lived in a trailer right across the street from Central Bible College, and uh, and she was a very pretty girl. And one day, uh, my roommate and I were going to take Nicholas to the zoo, and we went over to the tray. I went over to the trailer early in the morning. I knocked on the door, and she opens the door, and I, she didn't have any makeup on, and she just got up, and I didn't recognize her. And I go, "Is 
Kathy here? <laughs> and she starts, she's like, yeah, right, Joe. And I go, oh, crap. You're <laughs> so sometimes you just don't recognize them, you know? <laughs> and I'd seen her a hundred times, but I just, it, and it, I felt terrible. <laughs> but anyway, so. Uh, okay, verse 8. So uh, Joseph recognized his brothers, but they didn't recognize him. And then Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed about them. You are spies. You have come to see the nakedness of the land. Um, when, when they bowed, Joseph remembered the dreams. That, that brought the memories back. Probably some bad ones too. But he was able to compose himself. and he, Joseph always knew why he was there. That he was the deliverer, not only for Egypt, but for his family as well. The nakedness of the land is the unguarded areas. The areas that uh, are not protected in Egypt. So that's all that means. Uh, I, I, I want you to notice something here too. Um, you are spies, you have come to see the nakedness of the land. Do you know that it's the law that always points out your flaws? It's the law that condemns you. There's ten brothers, and he's saying you're spies, you're, you're spying on the land, you get, you're up to no good. And that's what the law does to you. And no matter how hard you try, it's going to, it never, it can't save you. Because you're unable to fulfill it. it the law was never given to provide salvation. It was always given to pro, to show you your nakedness. And that's why it uses the nakedness of the land. So it only exposes your need for a Savior. Mm -hmm. um, the law never covers, it only reveals where you fall short. And it will do that every time. Have you ever uh, read like, it doesn't really matter. If you go, man, I read five chapters in the Bible today. Uh, the enemy will come and say, yeah, well, so-and-so reads ten a day. You know, you hardly do anything. What about this guy? He always brings somebody up that's better. Mm. Um, but you know who we need to look to? Christ. Christ He's, gives love. Yes. He, and he gives encouragement. And yep. he gives... Exhortation. We praise him and exhortation. Yeah. Yep. And the law only and condemns. It will condemn you every time. Wow. Um, and Jesus uh, made it even stronger by saying... Uh, You've heard, do not commit adultery. Even if you look at a woman and lust after her, you committed adultery in your heart. So uh, Jesus got right to the uh, crux of the matter. But I want you to see this scripture in Revelation 3, verse 18. Um, I counsel you to buy for me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with salve, that you may see. So... God doesn't want our nakedness exposed. That's what the law does. It exposes mm -hmm. that you are not clothed, that you are naked. But Christ gives us a new garment. Uh, verse 10. And they said to him, No, my Lord, but your servants have come to buy food. Uh, hey, we, we're good people. We just came to... They're not, I don't know if his brothers are good people or not. Uh, we came to buy food. We are all, now listen, they start blurting out, right? We are all one man's sons. We are honest men. Your servants are not spies. I don't know if they're honest. I don't know if they're good, good men, but... Uh, well, I don't know what kind of people they sell their brother God, into so slavery. Right? <laughs> and they were going to kill him. <laughs> so, I don't know. Maybe they were okay. But he said to them, No... But you have come to see the nakedness of the land. He says it again. And they said, your servants are twelve brothers, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And in fact, the youngest is with our father today, and one is no more. They, didn't, they just said one's no more. Um, but as Joseph once, I love the way that they said twelve sons of. Like people ask me, how many kids do you have? And I say four. We lost one in an accident in 2009. And um, mm -hmm. we have two girls and a boy. Mm -hmm. um, because he's still alive. Mm -hmm. he, he's in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I'll see him again one day. Uh, just as Joseph once pleaded for his life, now they plead. They're, they recognize this guy's mad at us. And we need to make sure that he doesn't kill us. They're really pleading for their lives. That's why they're, they're giving him all this information. Uh, they begin to provide information about their family to prove their case. 
this, this. They're, they're talking about their family. They're telling them everything that's going on. We are of the family of God. He is our Father. Our redemption is in who we are of. So they start talking about their family. We're from Jacob, and we're 12 brothers, and so they're trying to find their redemption in who their family is. Our redemption is in whose family we belong to. Their redemption is in whose family they belong to. And that's what they're trying to do here. Uh, Romans 8.15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So they're trying to justify themselves by saying we're from this family. We justify ourselves by saying we are of the family of God. Jesus Christ has paid the price. It's because of our family that we're justified. I don't know that they were righteous brothers, but because of the family they belong to, they, they're going to experience salvation. Okay? Alright. Uh, verse 14, but Joseph said to them, it is I, it is as I spoke to you, saying you are spies. In this manner, you're going to be tested. Now, they just blurted everything out, so now he's going to test them on it. By the life of Pharaoh, you shall not leave this place unless your younger brother comes here. Send one of you, and let him bring your brother, and you shall be kept in prison, and that your words may be tested to see whether there is any truth in you, or else, by the life of Pharaoh, surely you are spies. So he put them all together in prison three days. Hmm. So at first, Joseph says, you're all staying here except for one. One's going to go get that brother that you're talking about and bring him back. But still, it's going to be, their redemption is going to be the family that they're in. Um, so for them to be redeemed, they must produce their brother. At first, Joseph said all would have to stay except for one. And they're placed in prison for three days, just three like days Christ again. was. Yeah, three days. just wow. like Christ was in the tomb for three days. So uh, here comes their resurrection. Uh, then Joseph said to them, "The third day, do this and live." That's what Jesus says. Believe on me and live, and we have eternal life. Do this and live, for I fear God. If you are honest men, let one of your brothers be confined to this prison house. So he said, "Okay." I'm not keeping all of you. I'm only going to keep one. The rest of you can go back. But you go and carry grain for the famine of your houses <coughs> and bring your youngest brother to me so your words will be verified and you shall not die. And they did so. So if they can prove they're from this family, they're not going to die. If they can prove they have a younger brother and what they said about their family is true, they won't die. And... Uh, so, after three, three days, do this and live. Jesus rose from the dead as the first fruits of the resurrection. Joseph spoke life to his brothers. His brothers are scared to death, but Joseph is always speaking life, life, life. He wants to be their supplier. He wants to be their redeemer. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 20, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man... Also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. That's a huge statement right there. In Adam all die, in Christ all shall be made alive. Just like you are a sinner. Did you know you're not a sinner because you sin? You sin because you are born a sinner after Adam. Because of Adam, we're all born sinners. We inherit that. But because of Christ, we're all made righteous. And just like, I'm going to say this, just like those people who are of Adam, even if they do something right, are they righteous? Are they going to heaven? No, they have to believe in Christ. You can do all kinds of right things and still never believe in Christ. But that won't get you to heaven. Right. I'm going to say that if you're in Christ, even if, even if you mess up, it's not going to keep you from heaven. Because your righteousness is in Christ. Just like your sinnerhood is in Adam, your righteousness is in Christ. That's exactly right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So, how in the world, if 
the blood of Christ is is greater than the blood of bulls and goats. If what Christ did is much more than what Adam did, how much greater his righteousness than Adam's sin? That's why the Bible says where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. Because the work of Christ is so much greater than the work of Adam. So, after three days, he lets them all go except for one. Verse 21, Then they said to one another, We are truly guilty concerning our brother. Now they realize we're experiencing this because of what we did all those years ago. Mm -hmm. For we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us. See, they're pleading now. Mm -hmm. And they said, we, did, we saw the anguish of his soul when he pleaded with us and we would not hear. Therefore, the distress has come upon us. So they're saying, because of what we did and we didn't listen to his pleas, he begged us not to send him away. Now, this guy's not hearing our pleas. Mm -hmm. The only difference is, they were serious about sending Joseph away and about killing him. But here, they're talking to their Redeemer. They're talking to the one who's going to supply for them. And they don't even realize it yet. They're full of fear, and they really don't need to be, because that's their brother. That, that family that they're saying, if we can produce our family, then we can produce our, our life, we get our life back, it's standing right there with them. But they don't realize it. And they don't and realize, they don't it. realize it. Yeah. So Joseph spoke life, but they speak death. You hear that? Joseph speaks, do this and live. Do this and live. And they're saying, we're getting all this because we messed up. We made mistakes. But Joseph is trying to show them, here's how you have life. They realize that they did not care about Joseph's anguish. Now uh, they will have distress in return. So that, but their distress is only upon them. Um, Joseph told them, here's what you do. Bring this guy back. You can trade in the land. You can do all this stuff. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted, courteous, not returning evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Mm -hmm. So we need to be kind to one another We need because Christ was kind to us. And for that, we get a blessing. So Joseph is, is putting blessing on them, and they don't even know it yet. Okay, verse 22. Reuben answered them, saying... Now, Reuben was the one that when they were, th uh, when they were going to kill Joseph... He said, put him down in this well till we can figure out what to do with him, right? He was the oldest. Mm -hmm. And with the intent of going back and getting him out of there later on. Mm -hmm. But while he was gone, the other brothers sold him into slavery, right? So Reuben's the oldest answered them saying, did I not speak to you saying, do not sin against this boy and you would not listen? Mm -hmm. Therefore, behold, his blood is now required of us. Now because of his blood, our blood is required. So, they deserve punishment. They messed up. But Joseph has plans for supply, not punishment. Be why? Because he's alive. He's not dead. They thought he was dead, and that blood for blood. But Joseph is alive, just like Christ is alive. Remember, it's been three days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Hebrews verse 8, 12. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds. I will remember no more. And uh, that's in Hebrews, but it's also quoted in Jeremiah. It was a, a prophecy. God said, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. This is God. Because of what Christ did, it was so powerful on the cross. Christ is merciful to our unrighteousness and our sins and our lawless deeds. He remembers no more. Uh, verse 23, but they did not know that Joseph understood them. So Joseph could understand them, but he was using an interpreter to speak to them. So they didn't know that he that Joseph could understand them. For he spoke to them through an interpreter. And he turned, him, uh, he turned himself away from them and wept. Then he returned to them again and talked with them. And he took Simeon from them and bound him before their eyes. Now Simeon, he took Simeon because Simeon was the next oldest. He was there, he was there when they uh, sold him to... Uh, <clears throat> the caravan, when they sold Joseph to the caravan. So Simeon was the next oldest, the most responsible in that group while Reuben was gone. So he grabbed Simeon and says, you're staying. And uh, 
that's because he was the oldest and he was really the one responsible for that. Mm -hmm. So Joseph was acting in love and he was very emotional. He had to turn away because he heard what they were saying. Mm -hmm. He realized they recognized that they messed mm -hmm. up. So he took Simeon, which is the next eldest, because Reuben was not around. Simeon means to hear. It's from Shama. Shamer. Right? Shamer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it means to hear. Uh, John 11.35 says, Jesus wept. You see how Joseph wept up here? Mm -hmm. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. Jo Joseph loved his brothers. And he's, he has good plans for them, not bad. But they think, oh shoot, we're in trouble. And isn't that how we feel about God? Mm -hmm. Oh shoot, he's mad at me. He, I'm in trouble. Um, and that's not how we should think. We should think he loves us. He gave his only son for us. And he knows that he's mindful that I am but dust. And he has good plans for me. Plans to prosper me. Plans to do good for me. And um, we need to let go uh, that he's always out to get us. He's not. That's the enemy that tells us that. Okay. Verse 25. Then I know I'm going fast, but I, I'm trying to get it all done here so I can have three videos on there and get that, get that uh, process. Uh, verse 25, then Joseph gave a command to fill their sacks with grain to restore every man's money to his sack and give them provisions for the journey. Not only did he give them grain, he returned their money and gave them provisions for the journey back. Thus he did for them. Uh, so they loaded their donkeys with the grain and departed from there. So the brothers left with more than what they came with. Not only did they leave with the grain, but all the money that they had and additional provisions. Jesus is our supply. The price has been paid. Jesus always, his supply is always greater than the need. Every single time. Every time. They uh, Remember when he fed uh, the 4,000 and they took up baskets left over? The 5,000, they took up baskets left over. Um, uh, do you know that he fed the 5,000 with less than what he fed the 4,000 with? Um, so his supply is always greater than the need. Verse 27, but as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey feed at the encampment, he saw his money and there it was in the mouth of his sack. So they must have just opened one sack to feed the donkeys because the others didn't find out till later. Uh, anyways, so he uh, saw his money and there it was in the mouth of his sack. So he said to his brothers, my money has been restored and there it is in my sack. Uh, then their hearts failed them. Okay, now, rather than thinking, oh, that's awesome. We got, we got our money back for one of these sacks of grain. They think, oh, shoot. You thought we were in trouble before? Look, look what they say. Then their hearts failed them, and they were afraid. They're just like Jacob. Ja this is how Jacob is. Saying to one another, what is this that God has done to us? They're, they're getting more and more scared all the time. So they did not recognize their brother, which caused fear. Mm -hmm. They did not recognize that the supply cost them nothing. Mm -hmm. That caused fear. Rather than going, man, we got out of Egypt, we're blessed, we have this provision, and our money's there. Uh, people did not recognize Jesus when he came. They didn't recognize who he was. People do not recognize that he bore the price for their redemption. We really don't, many, I'm going to say many Christians really don't understand the price that Jesus paid, how 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 powerful His blood really is. Because if they did, they would recognize the security that they have in being a child of God mm. and being in that family of God. Mm. It is <laughs> there's nothing greater than the blood of Christ. Um, so, anyways, uh, Philippians four nineteen says, "And my God shall supply all your need." according to His riches and glory by Jesus Christ. So, He has plenty of supply for anything that we need. More than enough. Verse 29. Then they went to Jacob, their father. So they travel all the way back to Canaan. They get to their father in the land of Canaan and told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man who is Lord of the land spoke roughly to us and took us for spies of the country. So, first thing is fear. They're speaking fear. Scared to death. Um, frightening. Now they're going to frighten Jacob. So, what about the blessings that they just had? Yeah. They really had a lot of blessings. They were in prison. They're out of prison. They got their, uh, found their money, at least in one of the sacks. Uh, they returned with more than what they had left with. 
Verse 31, but we said to him, we are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father, one who is one is no more, and the youngest is with our father this day in the land of Canaan. Um, I don't know about honest men, I said that before, uh, but they weren't spies, so we'll give them that. Uh, they reveal all the information about their family. Sometimes it's not good to just blurt everything out. This is something I try to teach Shelly uh, to this day. Um, she's a blurter. <laughs> Blur. Uh, when she got pregnant with Josie, um, I was in my office, and uh, I was in the uh, in my office, and we had about 24 people working for us at that time. And I'm on the phone. Shelly calls me. I get the phone, and Shelly goes, Joe, I'm pregnant. I took a t pregnancy test, I'm pregnant. I said, okay. I said, don't tell anyone. Let's go to the doctor. Let's confirm it. Because, I mean, you know, we hadn't had a kid in a long time, right? Uh, we thought we were done. And so I walk out of the office, and as I'm walking down the hall and out into where everybody's working, they're all looking at me. And I look at them, and I go, you guys already know, don't you? She had everybody knew before I did. She already called everybody. I go, oh my gosh. Yeah. She probably had to tell them, don't, don't say anything. Don't go know yet. Yeah, they're all looking at me like, Like you know, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so let's read this scripture in 2 Kings 20, verse 15. Oh my gosh, you tell me this all the time. And he said, What have what have they the prophet said this to Hezekiah? What have they seen in your house? So Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. <laughs> that was the Babylonians. They ended yeah, right, up coming right, and right. taking it's everything silly. that they saw. Oh. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I always tease Shelly about this. Uh, so anyways, they, they just blurted everything out. So jo Joseph was really wanting to know how his family was doing. Um, <laughs> verse 33. Then the man, the Lord of the country, said to us, by this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your households and be gone. Just the fact that Joseph gave them food for their family, they should recognize this is a, a guy who cares. Yet they're still scared to death. Uh, anyways, and bring your youngest brother to me so that I, I shall know that you are not spies, but that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. So, they need to prove that they're honest men. And they have to bring Benjamin back to Egypt. So, it happened as they emptied their sacks that, surprisingly, okay, now, they already seen one person got their money back. They were surprised to find each man's bundle of money was in his sacks. And when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. Most people would go, oh my gosh, we got all our money back. Um, but they're, now they're really scared. Uh, so another blessing causes them fear. They're being blessed, 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 but it, all it's doing is producing fear, fear, fear. Um, <clears throat> they don't recognize God's provision and blessing. Let me get a drink of water. It is not natural to get something for nothing. Do you, you know that? Mm -hmm. We have, there's something about us that doesn't like to get something for nothing. We feel like we have to earn it. Um, but we, we can't earn redemption. We can't earn righteousness. There's just no way. And uh, they were very scared because they just got all kinds of stuff for nothing. Uh, God can produce supply without your resources. He doesn't need our resources to give you the supply that you need. They had all theirs back and still had all these resources. Uh, okay, <clears throat> verse 36. And Jacob their father said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more. In other words, you are, have made me sad to the point of bereavement. Joseph is no more. Simeon is no more. And you want to take Benjamin. So he's like, I've lost two sons and now you want my favorite? Um, all these things are against me. 
Uh, has anybody ever said that? <laughs> All these things are against me. Be careful about saying that because they weren't against him. All these things were for him. And he didn't even realize it. Um, he didn't recognize that his redemption was there. Um, Jacob's always been fearful. And his kids are fearful. And now everybody's afraid. Um, all these things are against me. I, I love that line. Uh, I actually used to say that. I quit saying that. Um, little did he know they were for him. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That's what we need to keep in mind. No matter what's going on. Who knows what the consequences could be from something. Uh, then Reuben spoke to his father saying, Kill my two sons. I, I love it. Reuben kind of steps up to the plate here. And he, Reuben seems like he was a good guy. The whole way. He still should have hung around there and micromanaged that situation with his brothers and Joseph. That's what happens when you don't micromanage. This is why I micromanage. Because see, stuff gets out of hand when you're not paying attention. Um, so uh, he says, kill my two sons. If I do not bring him back to you, put him in my hands and I'll bring him back to you. So Reuben says, I'll, I'll take the responsibility. Um, so uh, Reuben was the one who was planning to save Joseph out of that well. Uh, he's willing to put his own two sons on the line. Verse 38. But he said, and this is Jacob, he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. He, he has 11 brothers and a sister, but he says he's left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you would bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. So what do we see here? Jacob loves Benjamin more than Simeon. Simeon's in jail, could be killed, but he's like, uh-huh, no, Benjamin's not going down there. I love him a lot more than I do that other guy. Um, Jacob's not willing to let Benjamin go, and he's ruled by fear. Uh, so we need to face our fear. You know what? Uh, burying your head in the sand is not the way to deal with it. You have to face it. If you're afraid of the dark, turn out the lights. This is what I'm trying to teach Joseph. Um, recognize that dirt, but I scare her sometimes, and that, that, that's not helping when I hide in the shadows and jump out of it. <laughs> just not, I don't know what's it. I just, she's doing it now, scaring Shelly and stuff. I love it. Uh, recognize that during the famine, Jesus is our supply. There's a famine going on. Their supply is with Joseph. And now Simeon's there, and they're not there. And he says, nope. Uh, he's not going. And so we end chapter 42, which is a great picture of Joseph providing, but them not recognizing their own salvation. Um, any questions? Comments? Isn't that cool? I just, I love this book of Genesis. It's, it's like... I just, it's just awesome to me. I just love it.